Hello, everyone. Good day. My name is Chad. I'm here just like everyone else to learn more about the upcoming project called Lollipop, the system behind it called DeFi, and the other pivotal part in Lollipop, NFT. I'm not an expert in any of these topics as my background is nothing near it. I was a math teacher at one point and then shifted to becoming a company product trainer in several of my work experiences. I still train new hired employees in our company about their products and tools, but nothing similar to what we will be discussing. Together with me is Mr. Vince Power. Vince has made time to be with us today as these topics are his expertise. He works for three banks and spends specializes in financial technology. He will be the one to simplify these topics for us and put it down in layman's terms. Thank you for freeing up some time with us today, Vince. Hey, Chad. Well, thanks very much for the intro and the opportunity to be here today. Of course, uh, my name is Vince, and uh, I've been working in fintech and artificial intelligence for about 20 years in Europe mostly. And uh, I've worked at the European Central Bank and SWIFT, which is the global payment cross-border institution. Uh, and I've also worked at many other banks. Chad, I'm looking forward uh, to working with you and the Lollipop team to deepen my understanding of DeFi and NFT. And most importantly, I'd like to leverage the experience I've gained in payments and financial services in the past for the benefit of LPOP and DeFi. Through this presentation, I hope we can all understand the essence of DeFi and NFT as a serious challenger within the decentralized finance and open banking alternatives, rather than just seeing it as a passing fact. Thank you, Vince. For that, again, I would like to express our deepest gratitude for you sparing a few minutes to help us understand these topics today. Before we go into our very exciting project, it will be important that we clarify a few terms for the users and participants to better understand. So first, in these five categories, we will be discussing four topics. DeFi, NFT, Lollipop, and why all eyes are on Lollipop. So DeFi is short for decentralized finance. It's a completely new financial ecosystem. The other term NFT is short for non-fungible token. And Lollipop is a platform that is believed to be a game changer in both DeFi and NFT history. I've heard about a lot about this project and it's very, very interesting. It will have functions like staking, farming, auction, power-up tokens, and airdrop by SNS. They're trying to do something very new into the industry, and I cannot wait to see it. So let's discuss DeFi, Vince. Would you help us understand this a little bit better? Hi, John. Yeah, well, DeFi stands simply for decentralized finance. And um, thanks to the evolution of blockchain technology, financial services such as lending and borrowing and similar transactions can be done without the intervention of middlemen like the banks and the traditional finance institutions. So this, coupled with the use of cryptocurrency for alternative settlements, all you need to do is to connect a crypto wallet where you hold digital funds instead of using a card or a bank account with fiat funds. Mm. Um, once you couple these to the payment platform, you can make financial transactions by a simple click. No middlemen simply means faster and cheaper transactions are brought to you by DeFi or decentralized finance, which op operate on cryptocurrency and the blockchain. Thanks for the explanation, Vince. I think I understand a little bit better now. So basically, this takes out the middlemen in financial transactions by using the blockchain technology, right? So now that I understand a little bit about the DeFi, let's move on to the next topic, NFT. So NFT stands for non-fungible token. It creates uniqueness to anything you want to add value to. NFT can make something irreplaceable by using blockchain technology or smart contract to be exact. And believe it or not, when I say anything, I really mean anything. So have you heard about Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's tweet that fetched $2.9 million, $60.9 million for digital artwork, Beeple's artwork. And that's a lot of money. That's what it makes it so interesting. That artwork, a lot of major companies like Facebook, Google, 
Visa, fashion brands like Gucci, and even MLB, Major League Baseball, are participating to the NFT market. Why is NFT so hyped right now, Vince? Well, uh, that's a good question, Chad. Well, it's because now it's possible to prove the ownership of an object with a blockchain feature called traceability. Now, this kind of uh, keeps a history of those who've made a transaction related to the object. This makes it possible to prove the ownership chain of digital things and measure their uniqueness or scarcity. So let's look at the perceived value of a, a rare object. For example, uh, the value of a mint condition first edition of a physical be uh, Beatles vinyl, everybody knows the Beatles, um, can change over time. The concept of being an early bird owner or a first mover and the idea of an object such as the vinyl changing its value or gaining value or losing value over a period of time is an extremely important paradigm in terms of pricing and the value of an object. Let's take another example. When you look at Jack Dorsey's tweet valued at 2.9 million, as you mentioned, it can be characterized as an event-driven unique NFT or non-fungible token. If you think about influencers around the world, the opportunity costs of doing the marketing campaign and the number of people he's actually reached is very significant. So we're looking at a brand new nascent way of putting a value on things. The event with zero followers and no reaction has got one value and the NFT with millions of listeners and proven reaction has a completely different value. So what we're seeing here, Chad, is a completely new way of classifying value and decentralizing finance. So through different events and different objects, Chad. It's very new and quite revolutionary. Thank you for your insight, Vince. No wonder major companies and organizations all over the world are using their NFTs along with their products and services. Yes, I guess you're right, Chad. And um, let me just exemplify. Regarding channel to market, major companies are announcing their participation in NFTs and early adoption will bring a disruption in the advertising, influencing, distribution, booking, and e-commerce industry, for example. But regarding fintech in concrete terms, I believe that digital identity is the new bank account. And early adoption uh, of Web3 identity will ensure compliant tokenization of passports and ID cards that have been blockers to adoption of digital in the past. So NFT and smart contracts are poised to overthrow traditional payment schemes. For example, those of Visa and MasterCard. So NFT is the first revolution since the internet, right? Yes, Chad. I think uh, Web3 and NFT, when combined, will create a big disruption. Web3 will bring us the next generation marketplaces and DeFi and NFT will bring us financial inclusion. Bear in mind that we are not only talking about art and gaming here uh, with NFT, we're talking about all non-fungible assets from freelancer tasks in working online to flight seat bookings, uh, hotel bookings or event bookings and so on. Now, what's unique is we can now group together and create new business and industry and disintermediate the traditional players. They won't have such a tactical large advantage in compliant licensing and central infrastructure such as search engines engines and booking systems. This will all be disrupted. I see you eye to eye on that, Ben. 100%. I can't believe what I also heard about Major League Baseball launched their NFT project. The way I understand it, Major Leagues have trading cards like NBA and MLB. Because of this, you can easily imagine they'll become NFTs. Anyway, Vince has very good insights on DeFi and very good and applicable examples for NFT. So if you'd like to know more, please find him in Telegram and he'd be more than happy to discuss these with you. Now that Vince has helped us understand the terms and gave us concrete examples of DeFi and NFT, it's now time to take a look at our project Lollipop. So there's so many endless possibilities with Lollipop. I've heard so much about it. All you need to do now is to listen and take down notes on how you can benefit from using Lollipop. I'm so excited, Vince. I'm very excited, guys. Here's what we're going to be talking about. So in this slide, you can see that Lollipop will be the world's largest NFT market. Quite a claim, huh? Well, it's because it's linked to DeFi, a cross-chain technology that's helped in the rapid expansion of NFTs. Not just that, it resolves issues faced by the NFT industry for scalability. Issues. Well, NFT market is growing so fast and rapidly that each company is selling NFT on their own market. So 
Where will the creators be selling their digital work and how do they price them properly? Where will users know where to purchase digital artwork and know how to compare prices? Not knowing what the market price is affects the future development of NFTs. So how do, with Lollipop, solve these issues? Here's what's going to happen. We're going to uh, unite all these disparate NFT markets in one. In other words, Lollipop is the new window through which NFT market products can be viewed and purchased. Amazing. So amazing, right? You like Amazon? Well, you will definitely like Lollipop as this will give users and creators the same shopping and selling experience as Amazon. Searching for product in Lollipop, users will find it easier to find the right product and make their purchase. That, my friend is the beauty of lollipop and that's not all let me give you an example i really like nba cards vince but there are so many sites to buy cards i like in specific and lollipop instead of going to different sites you can see and compare cards at their prices all in one cool beans huh? come to lollipop and buy basketball trading cards cute twitter icons music videos and anything else related to nft now that's a work of art what do you think about this vince isn't this awesome? Okay, well, sure, yeah. So transparent pricing is very, very important. Uh, Sharon, glad you covered that. And um, for NFT markets to mature, I think we need a secure market where many ordinary people can participate. That's clear. Like Amazon or eBay, people will need to participate without anxiety. And they need to know they're going to safely receive the goods and the goods are our disc- as described in the market. So for example, when you search for something on Amazon, you can compare prices, features, and review the seller and the product feedback. And this is a major factor in the decision to per- uh, to purchase the product. I see what you mean. In other words, if users who buy <coughs> NFTs can buy them easily and confidently, the market can't be established. Yeah. And if there's no buyers and sellers with proven identity, such as Web3 ID, the NFT industry will end up being a pipe dream with no one trusting each other. Well, there is where I think Lollipop comes in. It's a marketplace where ordinary people can easily participate. This idea, though, is very, very revolutionary. Yes, Chad. Well, another factor that makes it uh, easy for users to participate is that paintings and works of art are sold at a very high price in auctions, such as Sotheby's today. Such works are often traded not just for their beauty, but for the purpose of being term hedges on investment against inflation, for example. So there are many users in the NFT world who own digital art for asset protection purposes, not just for its beauty. I believe understanding the HODL market value of assets versus alternatives such as savings accounts will make it easier for the purchase of an NFT for asset purchase. Of course, personally, I think that Lollipop is a project that combines three of the four differentiators of fintech today, which are basically identity, NFT, and DeFi. For these reasons, I find the Lollipop project to be very attractive. However, Lollipop is also a startup in the eyes of the world. So I think there are some governance issues that need to be addressed, such as how the project can be realized according to the roadmap. However, if the delivery is well managed, then I personally feel that it's a project with significant potential and a very good future. I understand what you're saying. And of course, Lars Pop is a startup, as Vince mentioned, guys. There'll be a lot of issues at the start, but you're dependent on DeFi and NFT, the anonymity of it due to the blockchain. You can rely on these to make sure listings and purchases will be in good hands. So we've We've talked about DeFi and NFT. We've already shown how Lollipop is a very, very attractive project. If that's not enough, the reason why people are paying attention to this is because anyone can easily earn money by using Lollipop's DeFi implementation. Now, here are the features that come along with Lollipop. Drum roll, please. So why are eyes on Lollipop? Let's discuss the features one by one. So first, let's talk about Swap. This is a standard feature of DeFi. If I were compared to a bank, it's a place where you can exchange currencies and you can buy or sell LPOP from here. LPOP is the currency that we will be using in the Lollipop system. What do you thought about swapping, Vince? All right. Um, I think Swap is potentially a very interesting global market. For example, 
Uh, in correspondent banking today, the banks use large pools of money held in different bank accounts in different countries. They need this to be able to swap and transfer funds from com- country A to country B, and they ensure where it makes sense that they can swap these currencies where there's already liquidity in the receiving country. So not always transferring money physically, but having it already in place. So a merchant, for example, selling something online might only want to accept Indian rupee, but he might want to pay a support supplier in dollars. So this whole swap market is a nascent capability to bring a product to the internet at the point of sale, at the point of demand. And this is a massive opportunity. And what we're talking about is farming liquidity from such existing pools. Lollipop uh, uses BSC and BUSD, which is provided by Binance a major cryptocurrency exchange. And it's currently offering lower transfer fees than the Ethereum chain. So Mm. that should be attractive. Yeah. So you think of it as a place where you can easily exchange LPOP for dollars. I have an account with Binance too. It's best to open an account since it's easy to exchange BUSD to BTC or Ethereum. Yeah, that's correct, Chad. And uh, I think the key point is we're going to disintermediate the middleman instead of correspondent banking nostro accounts. You're putting the liquidity in a pool across the entire internet that's global through various exchanges, various users, and specific participants. So you're allowing them to make a commission where they were disintermediated before. So it's kind of like B2B, but far more intelligent as a way of uh, enabling swaps. Chad, uh, another important point, please note that there are other tokens uh, with the same LPOP name, and this industry is blooming all over the world with a lot of token names being used. So there's also dangers of filching and other sites with other addresses claiming to be LPOP. So if you're interested in getting in early on, make sure you use the configuration information that Chad will share uh, during this call, and also ensure sure you sign into the only official Twitter and Telegram accounts to get official news. And bear in mind, LPOP team will never request you to send tokens to other exchanges or wallets. So be on your guard that you're not being spoofed. Definitely, definitely. Yes. Thank you for that, Vince. In this situation, we will be using LPOP as the currency for Lollipop. As we've been saying, we'll be making LPOP more familiar to you guys and to the users. But as Vince mentioned, you need to be careful about LPOP currency because of the many tokens that are being used. I will be posting the correct URL for you to access later on. And you can actually add LPOP to an e-wallet. It will be, I will be teaching you how after the presentation. So stay tuned. And that is the swap feature. Now, this one is very exciting. I've heard a lot about it. It's called staking or stake. Staking is the best part of DeFi in comparison to a bank, this feature would be a time deposit. According to the information, the yield of LPOP is still high. How much do you think will be the expected yield of Lollipop staking then? <clears throat> well, definitely staking yields can be quite attractive versus savings accounts, for example, uh, in a bank. But uh, while, for example, DeFi coins, based on some examples we've seen, annual interest rate would be around 5 to 30% compound. But you've got to bear in mind that this is a compound forecast, right? So you're actually staking and you get a compound effect, cumulative. Do bear in mind that you will also have an exposure to the exchange rate value of the underlying asset you bought into, which can go up or down. So the interest rate is relative to the underlying asset purchased. I want to make that clear, Chad. Clear as ice, Vin. Thank you. You mentioned 5 to 30% interest rate compound. Wow, I, I take that anytime. So in this slide, huddle, how long should you be able to huddle or stake, Vin? Well, that's a very subjective question, Chad, and uh, it's a difficult decision to make sometimes. I know one person who bought a car way back with 9.2 Bitcoin. Uh, he told me if he'd huddled the coin instead, he'd now buy a garage of cars. No, but you know, it's easy to huddle with the advantage of hindsight. And there's a huge volatility in the crypto market that's known. Uh, but the brave have seen consistent return over the times, uh, over the years in, in the majors. Uh, we don't know for sure. I wish I could tell the future if I had that amount of Bitcoin. Well, Chad, I have a theory based on my experience with stocks and other investments. But I think investing is not about working 
hard. It's about working wisely. Uh, invest in something, but only what you can afford to in the long term and definitely expect a lot of volatility. Uh, no doubt about that in the altcoins. But you have to understand the essence of what you're doing and you also have to be very selective. That's very, very key. Also, please note that DeFi is characterized by the fact that the yield is highest at the beginning. The yield goes up and down as staking ends and as soon as the quota is filled. So if you think about staking, I recommend staking in tactical coins earlier and I recommend getting in early and stake as soon as possible and based on the benchmark performance to premium sell and then hodl at least 30% of the asset. There you go, guys. You heard it from the expert. Get in early and hodl as long as possible. We've talked about swap. We talked about the very exciting feature staking. Now let's talk about farming. But what will be the yield of farming? To be honest, I don't really understand farming that much yet. So Vince, can you help us out again here, please? Yeah, I, I explained that DeFi is about everyone providing each other with tokens to exchange. So uh, in Lollipop, both LPOP and BUSD will be deposited into the pool. And LP tokens you will get by providing these tokens into the pool. The LP in LPOP stands for liquidity provider. Uh, the pool is used by various decentralized services to earn funds or make money. And you have a contract that guarantees that your funding deposit is safe, similar to when you put your money into a bank in a fixed term uh, and you deposit in there, you always get something back over a period of time in the form of interest. So you're providing liquidity in a pool where other people can take it uh, to use it to buy assets like houses or cars or whatever they need to. And you get a guaranteed stake on the interest on this use of funds from the pool. And this is what farming is all about. Okay. So in a bank analogy, you deposit money for others to exchange. And that's how you get paid. Everyone more or less can run their own bank, which is a very, very interesting feature. Farming is a feature that allows you to earn new attractive tokens that can further increase your reward. Don't you just love Lollipop? Yeah, it's a little bit different uh, from staking. So by depositing tokens on DeFi, you'll be rewarded with new tokens. Everyone can deposit tokens and the users who wish to can exchange them and the commission on the exchange will be shared amongst the depositors. This way, DeFi should be a system that can benefit everybody. Remember, LP tokens don't mean a single thing if you just get them. You have to farm them in order to get a, a reward or a yield. We'll explain this further in forthcoming conferences when the farming function is more formally released. But I think it's probably best uh, seen by doing when the product's actually released, Chad. And I think that's the best way everybody gets their hands on in and around the farming issue. Okay, I agree with that because it's difficult to be talking about this all the time and not really putting it into practice. And we look forward to your next lecture, Vince. Uh, I'm Oli Chad, and uh, if there's anything else you guys don't understand or have more questions, please please feel free to ask me on Telegram. Definitely, definitely. That's very reassuring. People are wondering about this too. The sort of a new token we get for farming reward has staking? Yes, of course we do. There'll be staking available. And uh, besides taking those new tokens, we're thinking that if you put them into the pool and farm LP tokens, you'll probably even get more attractive tokens as rewards. Wow. Woo. So the rewards will increase like a combo. I have to keep an eye on farming. I should suggest you guys do too. So the next is power up token. It's an attractive feature and it can multiply your staking yield many times over, I heard. This is the way I understand it though. If you have 30% annual interest rate staking, your monthly yield will be about 2.5%. But if you use a power up token to boost it, it may increase five times more in a month and you will get 12.5%. That is very, very shocking. But is this even real then? No. Oh. I'm okay. I'm kind of new to this power function, but um, I think your idea is correct, Chad. <clears throat> the risks are higher in the early stages of investment. Uh, but this is the same with conventional fintech investment also. So I, I think we need some time to come back and discuss this more in the future as well. Sure. Yes, please. Let's come back to this feature next time. I've never seen such an interesting, an interesting feature anywhere else. Who wouldn't want to buy this? 
right? Yeah, but um, power tokens haven't been released yet. And I'm not sure, sure that so many fintechs enable these in early seed rounds and that they're open to everybody. Usually, uh, pre-seed rounds, power-up rounds are restricted by the founders to be bought by only friends and family. But if I understand it correctly, this is a feature of LPOP which gives everyone a chance to buy into at least a small amount of uh, early bird premium equity. What chance, Lynn? Well, that's related to the auction function. So I think we should probably best talk about it in there, chat. All right, all right. So whatever the case may be, everyone can't wait for this to come out. I'll be sure to share the information as soon as it is updated and at Lollipop. Next is rewards. I heard that if a user's wallet meets certain conditions, they will be rewarded. Also, does it mean that a specific contribution will be the same as increased profits by increasing holding or duration? I've been thinking about this for a while, Vince but I'm not sure if I'm ready for it yet. Is participation in each function also related to contribution? Yeah, that's right. Um, all actions which represent contributions such as staking and farming generate rewards. So also in Lollipop, you can participate in auctions and contribute to other features to diversify or increase your contribution and get other rewards. I got it. I got it. So it's better to participate in various features in Lollipop, guys. It's not just about how many you have, but it exactly how much you contribute and participate. That it seems that the number of contributions will be the basis of the decision. What you will receive will not be disclosed yet. But I have definitely, I definitely have high hopes for this one. This gives me an impression that Lollipop has far more features and that will make everybody happy. The reward function is not yet fully understood, but it seems that increasing the contribution level will be key to receiving the reward. Now, this one is super, super exciting. It's called Airdrop. All right, guys. It seems that you can get airdrops with a function linked to Twitter and Telegram. This is a must-have feature for Lollipop to thrive, don't you think? Uh, yes, Chad. Uh, if you have a community of members, it's actually very important that we have intergroup communication established, where the community can get visibility and feedback from all the other investors and the holders. This will also drive adoption to the user groups for messaging and communication. This is very necessary as a function in order to thrive and manage the governance of everything we're doing. Very interesting because it's also free, guys. So everyone should be able to do it. This kind of cleverness is one of the factors that make Lollipop so, so promising. Lollipop is always built with participants and users in mind. We just don't want you guys to gain money in the fastest possible time. We also want you to have fun while doing it. Very, very interesting. Now, let's talk about new tokens. The current expectation is that this new token will be given as a reward for farming. Further staking of it will result into a higher yield than LPOP. I'm not sure what to make of that, but I'm personally very interested in the cute token logo, Vin. What about you? Well, there are many uh, opinions on the brand appeal of Lollipop, all said, including the logo. Yeah. So the market team and the brand has a certain charm. But uh, the appeal of the liquidity provider operational program is measured by the fact that new tokens are issued, staking is rewarded, farming is rewarded. And there's a sense of excitement and anticipation as to what fun things will happen next in and around the whole brand. So this is one of the parameters to measure the effect of center project. Well, it's a very, very exciting, fun thing to do. I can't wait to see what Lollipop will actually be when it comes out. By the way, the latest information will be released on Twitter. So you guys better check out the Twitter of Lollipop if you're interested. I definitely will. All right. This one, another very, very exciting part. Can't wait for this to come out. It's called the auction. So what kinds of things can be auctioned off at a discount, right? I'm most interested in what kind of items will be auctioned out. I like to buy specifically a power-up token if I can. And I think I'll be the first one to buy it. How about you, Vin? Well, these are the early bird preference tokens, Chad. So if the token performs, then they'll carry a significant upside premium and they're going to outperform the common stock. Well, I can't wait to get a hold of one of those power-up tokens. Yeah, and I'm not sure how many will be offered on the open market. And even if it's likely, 
Uh, it'll be sold for kind of a limited time on a very limited number. Uh, these tokens are issued to cover up the core lollipop bootstrapping costs. So there won't be that many. Oh, so I have to be stuck on the screen then. And there will be users who can't afford it even if they wanted it anyway, right? Well, the buyers who manage to get in early for a power-up token can also resell the tokens in these auctions. So uh, those who couldn't get them at one auction may get the opportunity to buy them secondhand. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. Yeah. If the auction price of power-up tokens works out cheaper deal than the reward they can get from boosting their staking, well, obviously they'll buy it, right? Well, all right. Yeah, there's no user who wouldn't want to buy it, though. That's true. He can probably profit from it left to right. Well, that's what I mean, guys, when I say everyone has a chance. You never know when an opportunity might present itself to you. So the option feature is something I have to keep an eye on every day. That's right, Chad. That's another interesting feature, and it was thought about from the user's perspective. Well, what thing be expect to be exhibited then? Well, of course, it's possible um, some big investors will flip the early Powerbird tokens at a low price for a quick win in the auctions. Uh, this is common practice. Uh, in fact, I think the auction will be held every day or so, so buyers need to wait for the announcement, and you won't be able to buy anything until the auctions were announced. Okay? Okay, okay. I'm sure I'll be able to find something I like. What about you guys? So let's share the auction information with each other on Telegram. I I will surely be there. I'm sure it will be a lot of fun saying, here's what we got for auction right now, or if you can buy it, hurry up. So these are the features that are and will be included in Lollipop soon. In order for you to know when they'll be out there, here is our timeline. So for each quarter, we will be adding the following features. Quarter one, the swap, LPOP launch, and the staking feature. Quarter two will be the auction, power-up token, and farming. Third quarter, the new token launch and reward in the year. 2023, not so long from now, you have the power up token, the new token launch, and you can own your NFT market. Last but not least, the NFT interoperability platform, Lollipop. I can't wait until 2024 when all these features have been added. I can't imagine how fun and exciting this will be. With that, guys, this concludes our presentation of Lollipop. We will be posting this on our Twitter account and sharing it on Telegram as well. Vin, thank you very much for your contribution in terms of these topics. And thank you very much for your participation in this event. I'm sure you are excited as I am for this project. Is there anything else you'd like to let our viewers know before you go? Well, thanks, Chet. And um, obviously, there'll be a lot going on and it needs to be addressed in the various group chats that we're going to follow. Um, we're looking forward to getting as much feedback as we can from the market participants as early as possible. And I really appreciate this first written explanation that you're sharing here today. And of course, don't forget you can reach me on Telegram if you've got specific questions, anybody out there. I think, Chad, there's one more point to uh, to mention, and that's pretty important, and it's in and around the security of the wallet itself. Um, we decided to use a very stable product that's been on the market for quite a while as a wallet. The group has decided to go with MetaMask. Uh, some of you guys out there will know it, uh, which I consider to be very robust in terms of its deployment. It's pretty trusted and pretty proven. And I think it's a key point that we should add this as a security to the wallets that are holding the tokens. Maybe if you've got some time, Chad, you could introduce that. Definitely. Well, I'm glad you mentioned MetaMask, Vince. I already have it as an extension in my Google Chrome. I have it already a few days ago because I'm so excited to have this ball rolling. Guys, if you want a robust, stable e-wallet, let me show you how quickly you can add this as an extension to your Google Chrome. So let's take a look at this presentation that I have on the screen. So just so you know, MetaMask is the world's most popular cryptocurrency wallet with a very user-friendly interface. It's versatility and easy to work with. with this is the distributed exchange or DX, DeFi and blockchain games, there are a lot of fake URLs. So this is the correct URL that you will be using for your Google Chrome. Now guys, note that if you already have one of these, you can skip this part. Thank you very much. Open the official website, click on the download now button, as you see here in step two. Step three, click install MetaMask for Chrome right here. Step four, on the upper right hand side of the screen, click add to Chrome. And then since this is going to be the first time 
time you will be adding the wallet, click on create wallet here below as you see. Step five and six, you will have to create a password. After you've created a password, make sure to click this terms of use and then click create. Step seven is a very, very nice feature when it comes to security. You will have to click on this lock icon here and it will display a secret recovery phrase, which consists of words and you will have to write it down or save it right away. It's very important to save this as the system will ask you how that information in the next step. So click on that lock icon and it will display the word. Step eight, here's where you will have to click on each word in the right order as it was shown in the previous page. So after you save it, click each word, the phrase will be displayed properly and then hit save below. And there you go, you've added your MetaMask account eWallet. So what happens next after you've added your MetaMask as a Google Chrome extension? Let me show you how to add LPOP or the currency that you will be using for Lollipop. On step one here, you've added MetaMask as your Google Chrome extension. The default market that you see here in step two is the Ethereum mainnet. Since LPOP runs on the blockchain of BSC or Binance Smart Chain, you have to change it to BSC. What do I mean? Ethereum needs to be changed to BSC, hence you will need to fill out these five fields here. But don't worry, we have that information right here displayed in front of you. So for the next word name, just type in BSC mainnet. This URL is very, very sensitive. Just copy and paste it here on that particular field. Chain ID is 56, symbol is BNB. And then the block URL will also be added there. And click save. So how do you add the LPOP symbol after you've saved it, right? After you've selected BSC mainnet, step two, you will have to click on import tokens below. Step three, after you hit import tokens, you will have to copy and paste exactly this LPOP contract address. The token symbol and the token decimal below will be automatically filled out after you copy and paste that address. When you've added that, hit on add custom token. And this is the correct LPOP symbol. Right below there, click import token and there you go so that's how easy it is to install metamask and to add the lpop symbol and bsc mainnet just so you know there are many similar notations for tokens token symbols in ethereum network and the bsc network at this time so please please be cautious remember the bsc network symbol token lpop also note that a small amount of bnb is required to use lollipop defi such as sending lpop i guess i suggest you to buy bnb from binance or anywhere and put it in your MetaMask account. BSE's gas bill is less than a dollar, so it's okay to put around about $100. So Vince, I'm sure you already have your MetaMask in your Google Chrome, right? Uh, well, uh, yes, Chad, but I had some problems in downloading it earlier, so I'm, I'm very happy that you've gone through that again uh, for everyone. Let's make this presentation available on a separate video for the users. Definitely, definitely no problem. So again, thank you very much, guys. That is it for now. Thank you again for your participation, Vince, and we look forward to the next conference. Chad, I can't thank you enough for the uh, information today and for orchestrating. Very well done, by the way. And uh, we've got a very exciting road ahead of us. It's important that everybody in the community gets involved in this as we get a lot of questions from them. This is vital for the success of the project and the program. Thank you all so much. I agree, Vince. I'm actually moved by the numbers of polite people in the community sharing their hopes for this exciting project. The stronger the community, the better outcome for the project. No doubt out about that all so let us all stay tuned for the news and announcement from the official lollipop team again thanks vin you'll be one of the users who will be very very instrumental in the success of the project so thank you everyone for joining and we will see you again in the next conference have a great day everybody bye